Hi, this is Eva for Once Upon a Timeline. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to go over here and turn this off. Hopefully, I won't have double voices this time. All right, let's see. All right, we have connection. See who's in. For some reason, this always gets turned on, but I'm going to make sure that that doesn't happen this time. All right, here we go. Okay, who's in? Preliminal. Oh, and Jay Zinn was first. I don't know if that person's still around. It looks like an hour ago that person was in. Uh, Janice Windsor, Susan Gunther Photography, Autumn Nichols, Cobb CO, K, Paul N N 9, N E 9, Bill M E, Mr. Madaza, Shari D, Gosi 333. QP is in. Welcome, QP. PG 2424. Kai Lucas Zachary. Kiyokuk Monty. Emily Joy Eckert. Moonbeam 123. Lots of people jumping in. Okay, this one I want to cover first. Uh, this is from thir Three Year Dead Man Switch, is a commenter on the channel. And they're talking about this. Uh, this person is talking about the uh, back from the dead phenomena. Now, I heard Mandela Affected kind of mention something about this, and I've been kind of watching it, but a third three-year dead man switch kind of uh, really chased it down more. And that is that uh, when people, when we first hear people back from the dead, uh, they do tend to die soon after. And so uh, here there's kind of a list of ones that apparently it was on somebody else's channel. Let's see. Um, oh, uh, YouTube video years ago by a person named Mandela Man regarding persons who have died. Um, his video was post posted on September 9th, 2016. Okay, so uh, basically this person just started mentioning people that in on that date in 2016, we're back from the dead. And those people were Jim Neighbors, who played Gomer Pyle, uh, Billy Graham, Fats Domino, Whitey Bulger, Fidel Castro, Chuck Berry, Chuck Barris, I, okay, I don't know who that is, Carol Channing. All those people were, were a back from the dead on September 9th, 2016, and all of them have died since then in like 2001 and 2016, a couple in 2017 and a couple in 2018, and one died early this year, Carol Channing, all within three years. So um, I don't know. You guys maybe think of everybody you can think of um, that is back from the dead uh, and when you knew, and then if they died again. Uh, maybe we can make a list of ones that we're pretty sure are back from the dead and haven't died yet, and uh, died the second time yet, and see what happens. Uh, let's see, Bluebeard also uploaded a video on 2016 about Bob Hawke, Australian Prime Minister, being alive again, and uh, on, on 2019, he died again. I don't even know that guy, but... Uh, Du, du, du. All right, so that's the plan, I think. Think of everybody that's back from the dead and when you notice they were back from the dead. And let's kind of chart who's, uh, has any of them lived longer than three years? Um, will any of them? Can we predict that they'll die within three years maybe? Or are they just kind of dying soonish but it's not a complete rule? Uh, that's the question of the hour. Can we Can we think of anybody who didn't follow that rule because um, if they're following that rule then we 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 then know that certain people will be dying soon which is interesting all right let's see what are you guys all talking about Lori Sorensen can't sleep I might as well listen to some boring chit chat instead oh shark eggs yeah um well, you know, let's see. Sharks are cold water. I mean, they were cold-blooded, so it makes sense they would lay eggs. I remember them laying eggs, actually. You know what? That's true. I don't even remember anything about how they reproduced. I don't remember crap. I mean, I would have assumed they laid eggs, but uh, I don't think that was ever covered, really. 
think they would just say something about little was known and stuff like that. Hmm. Now that I really think about it. I want to say that I knew they laid eggs, but I don't remember them ever actually saying it until recently when there's been a lot of talk about um, one baby shark eating the other one in the womb and stuff. That's all like just the last few years. Typical grossness of the, some of the manned animals. Let's see. I was pretty sure that Lauren Hill was dead. Okay, I don't know that person. Louis Anderson. Jim Neighbors died three times. Well, I guess as long as, even if they come back, they have to die within three years. That's the, that's the rule we're testing. The old guy from Airwolf died in the 80s or 90s, but he is still alive. You know, the one thing that I, uh, that really breaks the rule for me was Mandela, actually. Um, he was only dead for like three months or something, and then he was alive again. And then he lived a long time. So he broke, come to think of it, I'm just thinking of it now. I, he broke the three-year rule because he was alive a long time, and then he just died, what, a couple years ago again. Uh, da -da -da. So yeah, he was back. I don't know, it must have been at least 10 years he was back. So uh, maybe it's not a complete hard and fast rule, but it is interesting. Uh, the other thing is a lot of these dead people are old anyway, so got to consider that too. Dead and alive and then they're, they're still quite old. Kyokok Mani, the tiger shark, two wombs thing. Nobody had two wombs in my old timeline. Sorry, no. I mean, I know, I know there's a whole bunch of weird shark stuff now. Uh, this two at a time thing, no. There was no two at a time thing before. Not for me. It's all the last three, four years. It's, oh, uh, okay, so Three Year Dead Man says it starts from the point of recognizing. <sighs> I don't know how you decide what's recognizing. I mean, I definitely, uh, Mandela died, and three months later, holy crap, I thought he, he was back on TV, and I was thinking, I thought that guy was dead. So I definitely recognized that he had been dead, and then he was alive again after just a few months. And also, Jane Goodall was the same thing. Uh, I didn't know about the Mandela effect at the time, so I just accepted that, you know, I really actually was like, man, I must be really losing it because uh, two of them, uh, it was first the Mandela and then Jane Goodall was within this few weeks. And I was like, what? I... So I definitely recognized that they weren't dead suddenly. Um, I can't say, oh, I thought it was a Mandela effect because that word didn't exist then. And... Hello, humans. Humans. Let's see, are we back here? Oh, looks like we are back. Score. All right. Dum -da -da -dum. Okay, we're live again. Ooh, the cat. The cat wants to be in the stream. Let's see if you can see this cat. Yeah, he's making a big pest out of himself. There's the kitty. Say hi, kitty. Say hi. That's just what you need after a long break of technical difficulties is a mewling cat pestering you. All right. Duh. Okay, looks like yeah, the stream was not broken. I think I have to end the stream on YouTube. Um, if the stream is broken on my end, that does not stop it is what seems to be. Now I did get my windows back. Dong! Uh, I deleted those other two windows since uh, they may be cursed. I don't even know where you stopped hearing me, uh, but I was saying that, um, and I've said this story before, but one of the reasons I remember the Jane Goodall uh, alive again is because way back then I had gone to this new agey thing and someone else had said, 
he remembered Jane Goodall having died. And, and I was kind of flipping out because I was like, oh my God, so do I. I remember that too. And that's why it's stuck in my head all these years because that guy said it and I said it. Uh, and that was a long time ago. So uh, she's still alive as far as I know, Jane Goodall. Jane Goodall's still alive, right? <laughs> so that might be one of the other people have said... Yeah, she's still alive. Okay, so other people have said that she's an uh, she's an alive again Emmy for them also. So Jane Goodall has broken the the rules. Um, I've definitely known she's been alive a really long time, um, and uh, that was an Emmy I heard about almost three years ago. So, so if you want to say recognition as an Emmy specifically, then I can only say that you could I could recognize Emmys since I knew of the existence of the Emmy. So Jane Goodall was probably the longest lived uh, alive again for me by far. All right. Yeah, yeah, there was. And so this is the thing. I was sure it was Jane Goodall and that she was, she was murdered. And then this other woman now, and this was what was so weird because I've only ever heard of Jane Goodall studying any primates. And then when Jane Goodall came alive again, there suddenly was this other woman uh, who turned out to be the murdered one. But the thing is, I had never heard of her before until they said she was murdered. I'd never heard of her, so I was really confused. All right, so Facebook. Do, do, do. All right, so this next one, I'm going to stop talking about dead stuff and maybe my computer will stay alive. Um, I'm totally frazzled here. Let's see. Do, do, do. Okay, this one is from commenter Nikita Hokim, J-O-U-C-H-I-M-S. Hokims, I believe is how you say that. Uh, this is an interesting one for me. This one's going to be a little grody, so if uh, you don't want to see creepy stuff, you might want to just check out for a couple minutes and come back. But um, in my timeline, if you had a facial injury, um, they they would close it with skin, like if even if you were missing a big chunk of your head or something. I've already covered that uh, now there's people alive that are missing like two-thirds of their brain, and I think that was just the last few weeks that guy had that giant caved out part of his brain. But another difference that uh, this commenter noticed is that they used to, for me, they'd always close it with skin. Uh, apparently now they just leave it open to the air and it just seems to me like it would be a massive infection city. Um, but you can see it here on this uh, video for prosthetics. Uh, basically, um, this guy... This is just how he is all the time. Um, and it just looks to me, see she's wearing a prosthetic supposedly. I mean, that just goes down into her main cavities of her body. Uh, it used to be that if you had those kind of damage, they would close it with skin. They might put a prosthetic over that, but they wouldn't have it like a cavity going into the back of your brain and stuff. So um, if you look, there's actually a lot of these um, ones prosthetic Burp. didn't want to play too much of that because i can get the copyright infringement fairly easily but so basically these people um now you can have this giant gaping hole now in my old days i mean you would get infections and stuff they couldn't have your face wide open like that uh, uncovered. I just, uh, it's kind of, a, it's a trip. I mean, I, I'd always just see like, I'd see, you know, skin over it or something. It wouldn't be like this woman, uh, all the way back in there. So weird, weird. Yeah. Closing the wound. And that's how these, the, this, you know, they're all healed up and they're like that all the time. And those prosthetics are made after the healing is completed, so. You could smuggle drugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, like, 
there's a whole bunch of them too. If you start looking, there's just a whole bunch of these people. But I mean, you know, they have that caved out brain, man. I mean, you guys remember that, right? Right, man. Cat is all whiny, of course. I don't have any more frogs now. I have a whiny cat instead. Uh, I covered this one the other day, but uh, I mean, people like this uh, would not survive in my old timeline. They they wouldn't be able to. Uh, they wouldn't have. They don't survive the trauma. But uh, there's a lot of them in this timeline that are missing big chunks of of brain. And you know they won't have the level of impairments you would think. This is the one I had on the other day. Just, you know, two-thirds of his brain's gone. It's ridiculous. Look at this. I mean, it's not just that it's missing on the side. It's missing way back in. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. Humans are a lot stronger now, I guess. I don't know. Hopefully, I'll never have to find out on that one, uh, personally. Okay. Wait. Channy Moody, my internet keeps going out, so I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, well, my internet went out for a giant chunk, too, so uh, it's not just you. Is the kitty staying with you all the time now? Love kitties. Oh, well... He he kind of has his own schedule, but he's been really staying with us mostly for like a year. But um, he we have two houses on the property and one little guest house, and my friend lives on that. And he usually goes, Kitty is supposed to go over there at night. But if he hears me, lately he's been hearing me in here yapping, and he's bored, so he comes in here and makes a big racket instead of going over next door. I think part of it is because it's warmer at night, so he doesn't sl doesn't sleep at night. He just cats around all night. So, but yeah, he, he you know he's he's very close to being mine. Although I can't put an ID tag on him because the original owner will remove it and not give it back and leave me a nasty note. So, let's see. All right. So somebody had mentioned that I should check. Um, or she was curious if I had checked uh, Mount Rushmore. This is a nice photo of Mount Rushmore here because I can. Uh... So um, what's this up here? Uh, oh, shoot. I had. <laughs> That's one thing I did lose. I had several photos saved. Okay. Um, one of my other photos actually showed this. But when I first saw it, it looked like a little tent thing. Uh, now it's really a nice little shack. Uh, it looked very temporary before. And there's this thing. Now, this is new. I don't know what this hole is. Uh, I did a, a quick check earlier today. I wasn't able to find anything on this hole. Now, there is way over here um, that secret chamber thing. But but that's way over on this uh, this side for you guys. And it's not over here. This is something else over here. So, uh, you know, I never saw a top-down view until recently on this, too. But here's what's weird is I just don't remember all this carved-out spot here. Um, originally, I just remember the faces. They just carved out enough for the faces, and that was it. Uh, and this carved-out spot is getting, like, more and more now. It, it looks fake now uh, to me, very fake. But uh, so that was part of what I was investigating. I'm going to have to let's see if I can pull it up over here. Indicator photos. Hopefully this won't push the computer over the edge. Okay, it seems to be working pretty good right now, actually. All right, so the original photo, um, let me see if I can find that now. Here. Now, originally, only this one photo that I had had this thing in here and it looked like a little tent thing to me originally uh it did not look like a whole shack and then it did not have this hole over here so that has changed i think the hand has gotten a little more clear uh so those changes i do notice i think that the veining and stuff on their faces does change uh there looks like a little bit more carved out area over here 
next to Washington. But I don't see any humong... You know, I'm not sure what that thing is down there either. But uh, I don't know. hopefully it's coming back. Reconnected. Yay! Gonna have one of those kind of days. Okay, now here is the... Um, the secret vaults thing. I swear that's bigger than I remember. It's a little more uh, carved out around the edges. Um, and I never could find this top-down view before until today. I've looked at a million photos of Mount Rushmore, and I never found a top-down view. And now I found multiples. So here you can see that funky shack thing that, I, that looks more like a... Um, tent thing originally. I don't know what this thing is. It's some kind of roadway through here and there's like this little like that's that dark thing that looked kind of like a hole or something. So it looks like there's a whole like thing being built up over here now. We've got this looks like a permanent building. There's something here. There's some kind of path or something here. Um Originally, I never found anything like that. It was only this. I don't remember this from way back when. I mean, heck, maybe I just didn't know about it. But I swear this is changing. It's getting bigger now. So I do think that there's some kind of Mandela trickery going on with this thing. Okay, so those are the changes. God, you can barely see Lincoln over here. It looks weird. Uh, so I put this this photo into my Mandela effect indicators since um, I think we should keep an eye on this mess up here and uh, see what's going on with it. All right, I'm going to close that down. I kind of glanced around at the rest of my stuff. I didn't see too much. A lot of these old um, indicator photos are not as good as they once were. It's like they got done changing and now probably other things are changing uh, is my guess. So I think what I need to do is start finding uh, what is still changing. I do think Mount Rushmore is still changing, but not as fast as it was before. All right, let's see if this one will load. All right. Oh, hey, my stream status is good. What a miracle. Goes through three through three. Don't remember a shack thing. Yeah, that just that one photo, one of my indicator photos. Had, it looked like a, just a little tent thing someone had put up there. Uh, it was definitely very temporary looking. Now it, it suddenly looks like a building. And then I found it, uh, those top-down views that really showed it. The faces look like a different rock. They're whiter. Yeah, you know, um, was it like a year or two ago they were saying, oh, they just washed it, and um, that's why it's whiter? But the thing is that it didn't have all that scraping around it originally for me. So I'm wondering if that, that washing story is sort of a little bit of a cover-up for, for why it looks different. Um, it is both lighter, but it's also much more scraped out than it was before. Three-year dead man switch. How about aspirin? Now being Emmy to aspirin. It was always aspirin for me. Sorry. Can't help you on that one. Yeah, they were heads on top of a mountain. They were approximately the same color as the surrounding rocks. Yes, yes. They were just the heads. They didn't scrape out and they were at the top. But uh, the mount has an overhead mountain now to me. Did they do another power wash? Yeah, no, I don't know of any recent power washes because they were just supposed to do it I just heard about that a few years ago. I doubt they're going to do it every year. <laughs> the rocks look around it look like poo. You know, the, the face, uh, the rock quality is definitely degraded. It used to be a really clean looking faces for me too. Sockworms. All right, let's check out sockworms. Although I'm afraid to look. 
Sockworms. Ooh, sockworms. All right. Chuh. What is that cat doing? Huh. Yeah, it, I don't know if I want to say that looks like a sock or a dead tongue. Deep sea purple sock finally placed on the evolutionary tree. See, the cat's got the zoomies. Uh, all right, there's not a lot of info other than this one. See the brainless purple sock worm scientists found under the sea. Yeah, I have not seen that one yet. Write that down on the list. Sock worm. The scientists have discovered some new species of worm-like critters that look like discarded laundry items and churros. All right, so we got the sock worm. I don't see the one that looks like a churro, but I guess maybe that's the one. Okay, yeah, definitely weird. A lot of the stuff they find now is weird. All right. Um, I was going to s see if I could kind of master the song a little bit. And um, the Star Spangled Banner. So I went to listen to some people who were singing it so that I could kind of get the right tones and, you know, look at how other people sang it. And uh, the lyrics are different for me. Um, now, I do remember a Mandela effect for the Star Spangled Banner, but it was just that there's this question mark over um, at the end here. That was the old M.E. And I even checked to see if anybody mentions this one but there's a there's a bunch of emmys for me in here um okay let's see now first of all one is where they say oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave for me it was um can that star spanner oh really i just lost signal again All right, do we still have you guys? Derp. Well, it says I still have signal. Well, today is not a good day for the internet. Not a good day at all. Not a good day at all. all right, it says I still have stream. Why can't I get this freaking? I don't get it. If I'm still connected to you, I still have internet. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I wonder if I can load anything. Let me try. Let me try like um, eBay. Oh, eBay loads. All right, so it's just. Uh, this one page has suddenly ceased loading. All right. Interesting. All right, so lyrics to Star Spangled Banner. All right, so for me, it was, oh, say, can that Star Spangled Banner yet wave? Oh, say can that star-spangled banner yet wave. That's how it was. And then over here, oh, er, the land of the free and the home of the brave. That was for the land of the free and home of the brave. For the land of the free and the home of the brave. Okay, not oh, er. Actually, o'er kind of makes, I guess, short for over. Kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, if you look at this this sentence, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight over the ramparts we watched, then there should be a comma over here 
were so gallantly streaming. I mean, you wouldn't put, I don't know. The whole thing is, I mean, both kind of work, but it was four. Um, for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. So for me, it was four. So there's that one. Um, another one that's totally wrong for me is that watch thing. Um, over the ramparts we watched. You know what bugs me is I can't remember what was in here, but it wasn't watched. There was no watched in there for me. Uh, so er, that one bugs me. Let's see. I think the main ones until we look at the other three verses that I never heard of in my freaking whole life that are totally flipping me out. Let me see if I can find it. Ah, uh, maybe this wiki will have it. Uh, have you guys heard of the other verses, the other three verses of the Star Spangled Banner? I mean, usually it's you go for the land of the free and the home of the brave. End, right? That's the end of the song, right? Wrong, wrong, wrong. Um, this is weird because I looked this up a few years ago to get the lyrics and make sure I knew them. And there were not three other verses. Uh, this time when I went to look up the lyrics because I heard a couple changes, um, every last version of the lyrics now shows these other three verses, which I have freaking never heard of. On the shore dimly seen through mists of the deep, where the foe's haughty ho host in dread silence reposes. Now apparently you sing these these verses in the same tones as this top one, but don't ask me to do it because I would just, I think I just, my brain refuses to even accept that this is legit. So here's something else. Apparently this rest of the song is like got a, um, it's got references to slavery and stuff in it uh, and is, and that's why we don't sing it. Why do we not sing the other three verses? Because supposedly they're, they're bad and they're full of slavery and stuff. Um, no refuge could ha save the hireling and slave from the terror of, or flight or the, groom of the, the gloom of the grave. Um, so they're basically, I, I saw some arguments that this was like a verse that's basically saying that some kind of pro-slavery thing. I don't really get it, but, and then over here, then conquer we must when our cause is just. Um, I just, I find it really hard to believe that we would pick as our um, national anthem a song that had three verses that are so unpleasant that we refuse to sing them. Uh, I just, it's just bugging me. I, ha you know, and like I said, I have looked the lyrics up on this song before and never did they ever say anything about the rest of these freaking verses. Um, and I actually even looked up the old M.E., uh, Mandela effect on the question mark where everybody was flipping out in 2017 and uh, Brian McFarlane's on here and I did have the wait a minute let me see if I have to go strangle the cat a second what are you doing cat yeah what are you doing the cats in the zoomy pain in the butt mode at night all right yeah. So um, you can see a uh, Brian over new here. Punctuation. You find that really weird. Uh, it. The song is written by Francis Scott Key. Chit chat about this and that. I had it saved, but I lost my save spot uh, when um, when the computer crashed. Somewhere back here, he basically. Where'd it go? Crowds now. I can't even. See. No. is possibly right, one of the hugest so uh, Mandel at. effects out there um, next to the one about the baseball. They've changed our baseball from. Uh, hey, hey, cat. Cat's being a pill. Everything's a pill today. You know, it won't leave this. Okay, here we go. If 
finally. Anyway, he's on here under new huge Mandela effect. They've messed with our Star Spangled Banner. Cat's driving me crazy. He's killing my boots. Somewhere on here, he goes right down to the end. He talks about it as if those other verses aren't even there. But, of course, now I can't get it to work. All right, let me um, see. Now it says, and the rockets with the, uh, it looks like a single rocket going off. No, because there's bombs. If, if, that's, if this was the case, if this remembers it, and the rockets red glare, plural. All right, I'm All trying right. to find it. Um, it should uh, be brought up. It's, I had it saved before, but basically anyway. on here, he just talks about the land of the free and the home of the brave. And uh, he totally ignores all the rest of this. And what's weird is... God, I swear, it's like changed from when I looked at it this morning. See, it was right in here that I remember seeing it. All right, so he just talks about this. He doesn't mention any of this stuff. Ooh, did somebody just give me money? Woohoo! Today's the most disorganized show in town, but it was worth two bucks from Jay Emblin. Thank you. I appreciate that greatly. Not sure if I deserve it, but I do appreciate it. Okay, so anyways, this kind of goes with a lot of what I've been saying lately is like all the old school stuff is getting debunked or just made to look bad. And so here we are, the Star Spangled Banner, uh, now is full of like slavery and this um, kind of a justification for conquering uh, all three verses of which are so humiliating that we refuse to sing them. Is there any song in the planet where anybody or everybody just sings the first verse all the time because the other three verses are so hideous and then you make it your national anthem? I mean, freaking come on. That's just stupid. And it really, really pissed me off because I wanted to sing this song and now it's just tarnished like everything else is. Like all the old school stuff is getting tarnished or it's, um, or it's just was always a mistake or it's a probable hoax or... Anyway, so I don't know yet. See if uh, Brian remember. I mean, like... This, most of the, the people who are the Mandela watchers are all different versions to me than when I started. I, I am not sure about Brian, but considering all the rest of them are, probably he is. I don't think there's enough of, I did not watch enough of his shows, and there's not, um, I haven't seen any obvious personality changes in him. So, I don't know. The other ones were subtle, but. We're in a serious reality predicament. There are two different separate versions from different realities. Yeah, you know, it was just a real short song for me before. Ah. That's like the chain on Stat Lady Liberty's ankle supposed to be about slavery. Yeah, I didn't know anything about that chain until Mandela Affected mentioned it. And he said, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's attached, sometimes it isn't. Since I've been watching it, it, it hasn't appeared to have changed. Uh, but I think it's really weird that I didn't know about it before. Not my national anthem. Well, I'm glad. You know, I was so afraid everybody was going to go, oh, yeah, I knew about that. Yeah, now it's a really long anthem, but uh, it's a little weird. Yeah, it's just... Okay, thank God. You know, I was, I was so worried that everybody's gonna go. Duh, you just didn't know about it. You may notice a fluorescent glow outside late at night during a shift. You also can see the stars during a shift. Hmm. I don't know. There's always a weird fluorescent glow out at night anymore, and I've I have not seen the stars, uh, much of them in many years. The sky is so light now. 
I'm from Oz, even I know it. Ella, I never heard it. Yeah, who would make such a hideous song your anthem if it's so bad that you hate three verses of it? And it's everywhere now. I mean, it's anytime you look up the verses, there it is. Even all the verses that Brian McFarlane looked up, there they all were. And he didn't say a peep about it. The whole, the whole, um, whatever minutes he was, his whole six minutes that he was talking, he did not mention those. I'm really curious if Brian uh, remembers those verses because it'd be extra interesting if he does it because he's got them up there and they're right on the screen and he's chatting away about the whole first verse uh, and he and he couldn't possibly have not seen that second verse. So uh, it would be it'd probably be extra freaky for him if that thing suddenly showed up there. But uh, yeah, okay. I'm so glad nobody else ever heard of that other verse. This ridiculousness. Ridiculousness. All right. Uh, all right, now. Back to... to, to Let's see if uh, Reddit's up, shall we? What do you want, cat? What? This is what he does when he's at night. He runs around meowing and complaining about nothing. And I think he just wants me to make him happy. But since he's bored and I don't have mice in the house, I'm not really able to do that. Ooh, look. Okay, now we, I have had this on before. The fangs um, and camel mouths. And then I think last week or the week before. All right, cat wants to go out. Hold on a sec. Oh, kitty. Ah, uh, yes. What a wonderful show I have for you today. Okay, so about a week or two ago, I showed that camel grabbing that guy by the head and throwing him with uh, his mouth. Um, but it looks like there's more fangs on these camels now. There was just the um, set of canines before, but now it looks like they've got two more in the back. That is one gross-looking um camel head so now we have this set here looks like a couple here there's one back here these are getting pointy that's one gross looking like all the teeth are really long now too that's one gross looking mouth so it looks like there's three three fangs now one big set and two small sets uh, along the upper and I don't know what's going on over there. But that is one gross mouth. That's all I have to say. My paper is gone. All right. Today is not going to go down in the annals of smooth programs, that's for sure. Vampire camels. Yeah, that's a camel. Camel teeth on R W Reddit uh, WTF. Yeah, why would it? You know, because uh, Bill Emmy, I don't remember if it was a while back when I covered him, but camels are omnivores now. They're not. Um, there was a, like, there was a whole bunch of arguments, but basically I found a bunch of sites saying that they're, they're omnivores. Ooh, I just got, um, just wait until the Bible demands you kill. Yeah, well, I won't be doing that. Um, I just got 20, 20 something monies. I have no idea how much that is. It's N-O-K. And, uh, thank you. Appreciate it. No idea how much that is. I've learned that, uh, when they put these up, they're in their native money style, so... If it's not U.S. dollars and you're not familiar with the translations, it's mystery money. I don't remember the Hallelujah song having such sexually explicit verses. The Hallelujah song. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah lyrics. Well, your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof. Her beauty and the moonlight overthrew you. She tied you to her kitchen chair, and she broke your throne, and she cut your hair, and from your lips she drew the hallelujah. I don't think I really knew that song. Is that the song we're talking about? I don't think I knew that one. But uh, that does follow the pattern, though, because it just seems like a lot of stuff has got a lot more sex talk in it. The old days. Does he have food, water, and litter? Well, he pretty much prefers to poop outside, so we don't... There's litter in the other house, but he rarely uses it. He just jumps out the window and goes outside. Uh, we have water... Uh, at both houses, and the food is currently over at the other side because he's supposed to go over there. He just gets bored. He cats around all night and is a pill, and then in the morning he comes back, and he is the sweetest little angel, sleepy little angel all day, and he doesn't complain at all, and he just rolls in his little bed. And then at night, he's like the, the other side, the little demon kitty who meows at everything. Although he's not scratchy or anything, so that's good. He becomes whiny, and he starts knocking stuff over and just being a pill. That's his nighttime behavior. Yeah, I hope the Bible doesn't ever say that because if it did, there would be probably be people that would do it. Dang it, I think that there was already something like that added in that um, that was similar to that. And that was an ME that was talked about. Like, um, did Jesus demand we kill his enemies? Jesus says, but those enemies of mine who do not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of, I think it was in front of me. Uh, that was actually talked about as an ME like a year or two ago. So I, I'm afraid that um, Jesus already said to kill. Sorry to break it to you. Um, I, I can't say I'm a Bible scholar, but a lot of those uh, people who knew it well have said that it is an ME for them. And I, I certainly had never heard of it before. Okay, but those enemies of mine who do not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. Whoa, that doesn't sound like the meek and mild manner. Jesus, we know. Did he wake up on the wrong side of the bed? What's going on? Um, so apparently they're going to try to spin it that um, he doesn't really mean that or whatever, but it, it's definitely not cool. Moonlight Illusion had an OBE last night. Yeah, they are weird, aren't they? Yeah, a lot of people said that's an ME. Jesus didn't say that. I think the most violent I remember Jesus was when he got peeved and uh, he started throwing all the um, tables and stuff down, the money changers in the, in the, on the, in the temple kind of a thing where he had gone to one of the churches and there was all these money changers in front and he started flipping tables and throwing stuff. And that was the most violent I remember. And it kind of stuck in my head because he kind of like lost his crap right there and got pissed off, which you don't really think of Jesus doing that. Uh, but that was, that was the most, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure there was no demanding of killing. It's kind of how I measure things, you know, people, uh, the, the best things they say, the worst things they say, I kind of bookend people that way. How far good do you go? How far bad do you go? And in my mind, uh, the worst Jesus did was lose his temper and throw crap. Um, nothing beyond that. 
Do humans eat camel? Yeah, I don't know about that one. Probably we eat everything sometimes. Dang it. Chat keeps jumping. Yeah, Chanty Moody remembers the the money changing flipping tables. But that was the like the most violent thing um in my mind that he did at that time. Oh yeah, I do remember he cursed the fig tree so that it would never be, be bear fruit again. I do remember that uh which I thought was kind of mean. Of course they they have parables and they said, oh, it's a parable or whatever. I do remember that one also. But somehow it was against a fig tree and, instead of people, so it didn't seem as bad. Do, do, okay. Harp sponge, really different sponge. I think I saw that one. I think that one's a couple years old, harp sponge. Sponge. I know there was a couple other people said to look at and then... Uh, Kind of all heck broke loose. Ooh, you know, it's more fancy than the last time I saw it. See, I, I remember it being more like this. This is what you showed. Uh, but now, look at it. It's more complicated. Let's see if we can get a big one in here. Look, it's got more parts to it now. It's like a star. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, because at first it was just this. It looked like a harp. But now it's like a pentagram or something. So it's gotten more fancy. One, two. So it has five points on it now. And it doesn't really look like a harp. I mean, that looks like a harp. So interesting. Though that thing has definitely expanded. See, it was just like that before. So fancy. That's not very helpful. There's not a lot of images of it. Oh, okay, interesting. Well, I'm glad I looked at it again since it's been upgraded. See, look at even this photo. This photo doesn't show all the other points. Did they just see the same thing I saw, which was, you know, that? Very interesting. I wonder if that, are they separate species? See, it doesn't really show all the pieces here. That's weird. I wonder if this is, hmm. Is it more than one species? Chondrocladia lyra. Oh, weird. That, look at that. All right, it shows this as an image, but when you go to the actual website, uh, I don't see that image at all. I wonder if this one is like mid-split, mid-shift, because look, this is the old version, and you can really see that this is supposed to be a scientific drawing. You do not see uh, the other star points on this unless this is supposed to be a different species than this multi-pointed one. All right, let me just see if this condo, chondrocladia lyra, um, yeah, look, it, it comes up as, uh, see, when you look at this one, you, I just don't see those other points. Are they going to say that those other points grow later? That's where, oh, it looks like there's another one here. Chondrocladias in general are going to be interesting, looks like. See, like that one, where's the rest of it? 
there must be multiple species or something. Maybe it starts out like this and then it grows um, more pieces later or something. Because they are saying that this is also Chondrocladia lyra. Interesting. Flesh eating sponge. Ooh, flesh eating sponges. So it looks like we're getting some other offshoots of them with these um, bulbous ones. It looks like grapes. Ping pong tree sponge facts. Huh. Okay, well, that was a good find. Good find. Good find. Harp sponge. I'll just write that down for the laters. I could put it in the keywords. Anyone notice a bigger difference in the left and right side of your face lately? Visited my mother yesterday and I had a tar type talking to her because of it. It was creepy. Uh, my face is definitely quite different. And uh, this eye here doesn't open very, as much as nearly as much as this one anymore. That's been true for the last year. I kind of feel like, um, what is that guy, uh, Miyagi? He, just a, he had the, that character in the um, TV show, in the movie. Wax on, wax off. Miyagi had that tiny eye. Camel's teeth were flat. Last time I looked, at it, it had two fangs and that was it. Uh, not all those extra fangs. Horse fangs. Well, horses show up with fangs. Well, they have mustaches already, so I assume you know about that one. Horse fangs. Just checking. You never know. All right. Uh, no, they look like they're... Um, they look fairly normal still. Oh, they used to put metal fangs on their cavalry war, cavalry war horses. Huh. Huh. Interesting. All right. No, I have not heard of that. Okay. looks like their uh, teeth are still fairly normal looking. They have those funny slit eyes now and they have sometimes have mustaches but uh looks like the teeth are still good watching makeup guy and women's left and right side of mouth are different to draw a lip line last few days eva no drowning in quicksand oh yes i have covered that drowning in quicksand um now what was the story? You can swim on out of there. Used to be hold still or you die. Uh, now that's just an old wives' tale, and you can swim on out of there. So quicksand is less dangerous in this timeline. That was one I noticed maybe three years ago. It's a pretty old one for me. Platypus never had a poison sting, but to me it always did. Ah, oh, interesting. Okay. For me, platypus originally did not have any poison sting. Uh, not long ago, for a couple of years, they were saying it did have a poisonous sting. So now it doesn't again. So that would be a flip-flop. Poison. Platypus is one of few living animals to produce venom. Males have a pair of spur on their hind limbs that secrete venom that is active only in breeding season. Okay, so no, they're staying and they still have venom. While the venom's effects are described as excruciatingly painful, it is not lethal to humans. Many archaic and mammal groups possess similar similar tarsal spurs. 
Yeah, see now I didn't have that. No tarsal spurs. It looks like they're still somewhat venomous though. It does something. All right, so it's this little guy right here. There's a lot more spines in this timeline. Yeah, ducks did not have, let's see, duck mouth. Might as well just look in there. They just had little flat flappers. Do they have teeth now? Oh yeah. Okay, well that was um that was geese. Let's see, let's find a duck. Duck. Oh, they got little spines too, huh? Open mouth duck photo. It's supposed to be a photo. Yeah, look. They just were flat beakies. They just uh the heck is that thing? Ugh, Not, no, there was, I don't know what that is, but that thing wasn't in my timeline. All right. Yeah, okay, so ducks have little teeth now, too, looks like. Little beasts. That's a goose. I think I'm back. Am I back? All right, it looks like I'm back. All right, I'm back. Woohoo! Don't ask me why, but we lost internet again. But um, I was able to reconnect. I don't know what's up. Don't ask me. All right, so I was just looking at duck mouths. Now, a lot of these are geese mouths, but apparently ducks do have some little teeth now. In the past, I've shown the inside of penguin mouths. Uh, penguins that have anything besides black and white on them are a giant ME for me. There was none. But the inside of their mouths are also creepy. Anyways, I'm going to uh, press forward since we're uh, not getting very much internet going on here. <laughs> I'm not making very much progress on my list either. Okay. Found this one. Uh, apparently, feral parrots are taking over America. It used to be just in, like, California, but um, that I remember there ever being any wild parrots. And then I heard there were some in Florida. But there's a whole bunch of states now, even New York, New Jersey, um, that have these monk parakeets, uh, feral population. Uh, and I don't know how they survive in these cold regions because... Um, they were a tropical bird that supposedly escaped as, uh, from, uh, pets, pet populations that had escaped. So, I'm um, really suspicious about this. I just don't see how that they're going to be surviving in like New York and Chicago and stuff. Um, raucous squawks of lime green monk parakeets, descendants of escaped pets have managed to create thriving colonies in this cities despite the annual cold weather escape pet parrots have established breeding populations in nearly half of u.s states now if I, there were half of the states i would expect those half to be the warm states but no chicago new york uh very weird very weird i call uh i say that's very suspicious okay this one is just a personal ME. I don't know how much you guys remember uh, the shadows that the sun would cast. Um, I remember shadows on the ground from the sun being very clear. Um, I suggest you go outside and take a peek. Uh, this kind of shows, I mean, that's not an accurate shadow, but... This is how I remember it uh, being clear. You can see these these are obviously fake ones. But if you go out there, um, shadows are very fuzzy now. And there's something about the way the light bends that's different. Um, 
So you used to be like a clear de demarcation between the, the edge of the shadow and the non-edge, but it's fuzzy now. So I was just out there looking at that. Um, and they're just not, they're just not right. They're just not right. All right. I don't I really have any proof. It's just in my head, but. All right. Um, I'm going to jump to the better ones. 40 years ago today. So I can do took this. All right, do you guys remember 40 years ago, the iconic image of the frost on Mars from 40 years ago? 40 years ago today, Viking 2 took this iconic image of frost on Mars. Um, it's, this is from our space, but um, the person who saw it was a user from Retcon named uh, Y No Tone, Y-N-O-T-O-N-E, so good find. Uh, so apparently this is frost, all this is frost, and this is supposed to be this iconic photo that Viking 2 took 40 years ago, a bunch of frost, never saw it before. Um, you can see how Mars is getting less and less red. A lot of that dirt just looks, well, it's not dirt, it's frost, I guess, whatever. My brain is having trouble processing this, but yes, Hard to believe that it was 40 years ago. I remember seeing this image when it came out as a kid, and I was just amazed. Uh, anyway, our space kind of makes me want to hurl sometimes because it's just all people making fun of, you know, us conspiracy people and saying how stupid we are, so that gets old. But anyways, yeah, no, never... No, there's no iconic 40-year-old picture of Frost on Mars in my timeline. Yeah, no Frost until recently. Anyway, let's hope ducks don't start biting hard. I don't need that. I heard that they come back every 21 years, then I heard it was every 17 years. Are, ta are we talking about a locusts? Because there's, there's a lot of MEs for locusts for me. We're talking about locusts. Feral wild pigs don't seem to be a problem now. For a while, they were going to take over every state. You know, I'm not trusting that anymore because there's all these scare tactics. Uh, rabbits are going to destroy everything in Australia. Feral pigs are going to take over everything. The bark beetle is going to destroy the, all the forests of California. But what always happens is somehow it just never is that bad. Some things die and everything, but yet it's never the Holocaust that they claim, so... Uh, I don't trust that anymore. Yeah, Andon remembers no teeth. Exactly. There was no teeth in geese or ducks. Parrots are indeed aggressive. Yeah, they just have, parrots have really strong beaks, but, you know, I've seen those um, flocks of parrots and they mine their own beeswax. So unless you're like tackling one, they're not going to bite you. Okay, cicadas are coming again this year in my area. They originally came every 21 years, but then they came four years ago. Then he said different group comes every seven. Looking, yes, yes, James Elliott, yes, 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 yes. Uh, the first thing about these locusts, gosh, it was some time ago, but there was just one species that came out and it was like a huge amount of time in between. And I figured, okay, well, you know, I'm not old enough to have really remembered the last time they were out. And that's why I didn't know about them. And they were only in a few places and it wasn't California. 
uh, and and then I'm like, this is a big, they were all, this is a big deal because you're not going to see him again for another, and I do believe it was 21 years. It was over 20 years. And then suddenly there was another one coming out. I'm like, I thought we just had, oh no, this is the one that comes out every 17 years. And then, 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 and then there's one that comes out every four years and there's all these different ones. So now there's locusts coming out all the time, different places. And this is the four year locusts and the 17 year locusts and the, yes, I agree with you. And uh, I have thought about that. Um, I haven't heard anybody else mention it. So good catch, good catch. I totally agree with you. I, that's one of those ones I was thinking about for a while, but I never really said anything. Do ducks and geese eat meat? <laughs> well, you know, birds do eat insects, so um, they probably will eat anything you feed them. Oh, I got two bucks from And and thank you. Two bucks. Woo. -hoo. This is a money making show. I should do crap shows more often with major problems because um I made like, I don't know, maybe five bucks a day. Who knows? Killer whale talking. Ooh, I think I saw this one lately. Uh it learned to replicate some English seem to understand the first talking killer whale wiki the orca learns to say hello yes i think i saw this oh uh, it's uh, four or five months ago oh i don't know if i had it on the channel or not sometimes i think about having something on the channel and then if i have a lot of emmys for that day i'm like oh, i get more picky Repeating the words hello. So killer whale named Wiki repeats the Wiki. Wiki. Interesting name, Wiki. Like Wikipedia. Repeating the words hello and bye-bye, counting up to three and even saying the name of her trainer, Amy. The 14-year-old orca lives in Maryland, marine land at Antibes, France and is the first in the world ever recorded by scientists allegedly saying human words. E um, yes, I did hear about this not too long ago. I mean, it's not technically an ME because they're saying it's the first time. But keep an eye on it because I think you'll find in a year this will be like lots of whales did it and it was poorly documented and blah, blah, blah. That's kind of how the ME does things. This photo looks like Arizona desert, not Mars. Yep. And the photos of Mars are getting more and more um, Earth-like, basically. There's been ice on the moon supposedly for a long time. Yep. They got the poles now. They're supposed to be frost underground. Okay, a whale that speaks English. Yep, I don't know why does it doesn't even seem like a big deal compared to all the Emmys. Do do la coach. This one's interesting. This one is not the biggest Emmy in the world, but um, so there's this fungus that grows on corn. Pretty gross looking. Huit la coche, I think. Uh, huit la coche. So this is supposed to be corn, but all this smut grew on it. So sometimes it's called corn smut. Looks gross. But here's the thing, okay? So supposedly in Mexico, this is, uh, they eat this, and it's pretty high protein, and it's, this fungus supposedly tastes like corn. And this kind of trips me out because I've never heard of a fungus ever tasting like the thing it grows on. I mean, like, cheese does not really taste like milk. Neither does yogurt. Kimchi does not taste like cabbage. Um, Thousand-year eggs don't taste like eggs. 
there's nothing that tastes like what it grows on. Uh, but this supposedly you can chop this stuff up and it, it, it'd be really healthy if you were a vegan because you could get protein from this. So there's, I'm not sure exactly how this fungus turns corn into a, a protein when it's growing on the corn. So it's like corn, but with protein in it now. And it looks kind of gross, but. So this is supposed to be a big old cash crop uh, in Mexico, this Cuitla coach or corn smut. Um, they chop it up. So here it is all chopped up and they put it in like tortillas and quesadillas. So this is quesadilla de Cuitla coach, if I'm pronouncing that right. So that was really, it's a trip. I've never heard of it, uh, but I've never heard of um, any fungus tasting like what it grows on. But also this would be a valuable food source uh, too because you basically can get corn and you get these uh, protein-rich things. Yeah, I know it looks gross, but if you chopped it up all small and just like stir fried it in, you probably wouldn't think of it. It would just look like overcooked vegetables. And supposedly it tastes like corn, so you'd never know. You just think, up, oh, somebody uh, put soy sauce and overcooked the vegetables. Five days making animals, birds, insects go nuts. I don't know. They were, they've been acting really weird for years for me. Don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> they come now, it would make 21 years, but the only info I can find now is just 13 to 17 years. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of different, um, I'll have to look into it. It'd be take another hour to look at all that. Next, they'll say that whales always could speak. They were speaking in Latin. That's why, yeah, you know, oh, it's going to be like, oh, nobody ever thought to look or it was documented but then lost or uh, people didn't want to admit it. There's always some kind of excuse why it's always been there. I just heard of this weird corn thing in the past week or two. It seems like straight mold. Yeah, I don't know. It's some kind of special mold, though. I mean, that's not ordinary mold. To me, I mean, mold is like that fuzzy stuff that, you know, these giant blobby edible molds uh, weren't, I never heard of those until just this last year. I'm a vegan not eating that. Well, it's supposed to taste good and it's full of protein. YouTuber Mandela Affected says caterpillars now liquefy. Yes, I have, uh, I have mentioned that. Um, did it come from him? I can't remember. I did credit my source at the time, but now I don't remember what my source was. I agree that is a and M A. They they did not liquefy before. Crosota jellyfish. Okay, let me try that one. Crosota jellyfish. Crosota jellyfish. Oh, that's that spaceship one. I've seen that one. It looks like a little spaceship. Yeah, they're cute. It looks like something on um, some kind of a cartoon or something. Little spaceship jellyfish. Yeah, that one's not super new for me, but um, the dome is getting kind of more colorful and more lit looking. Giant blobby edible molds. Yeah, yeah, they used to just look like fuzzy, you know, and they smelled horrible and you would never eat them. That was how molds used to be. I mean, the best you could get would be like cheese, but even that smeared all into the, into the um, whites of the hardened milk. All right. All right, this is another one I've never heard of. They have a special, uh, elephants have been busy. First they got boobs, uh, but now they have um, this thing called a tusker. 
Now, the tusks on elephants are already massive. To me, they were never that big. They were just, you know, maybe a third that size. Um, the tusks that are on elephants now were what I used to see on, on the uh, depictions of woolly mammoths. They, they were never so humongous. Well, apparently now they have a special kind of elephant called a tusker that has spent genetics for extra big tusks and is an extra big elephant. Now, I've just heard of this. Uh, so now this one called Satao was supposed to be famous. One of Kenya's largest African elephants died in 2014, known as a tusker because his tusks were so long that they almost touched the ground. The Tsavo Trust announced that Setao was killed by poachers using a poisoned arrow. All right, well, whatever. I've just never even heard of this thing called Tusker. And I've been doing a lot of research on elephants. I've, I've talked about the shape of the head looks so different. The tusks are way longer. Females now sometimes have um, tusks. And sometimes they even have long tusks. The last of Air Africa's big tusker elephants. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that's the first of Alaska's big tusker elephants because I've never heard of that freaking thing. Uh, so look, it's tusks that drag on the ground. His longest tusks is likely way more than 130 pounds. Tsavo in Kenya is home to most of the... Some of the last remaining big tuskers. Elephants with tusks weigh more than 45 kilograms on each side. Experts believe there are fewer than 20 of these elephants left, and almost half of them are in Savo. Yeah, well, there's like none of them in my timeline, so. Look at this one. I mean, come on. So that's a tusker. So, you know, even the woolly mammoths didn't have tusks that long for me, and now when they depict the woolly mammoths, the tusks are like, let's see if I can find it. So woolly, woolly mammoths used to have massive tusks, and then our elephants were like little copies of it. Uh, but now the woolies have this huge arc on their tusks. It's getting more and more ridiculous. All right, so now they're doing that with the woolies. It, they've got to set them apart from the regular elephants somehow. But they uh, they did not have these upturned in fact, even not long ago when I looked at them, they just had a little curve to them, kind of like ocean waves. So now they're like, Tch. all right, so that keeps changing. We got tuskers, and then the woolly mammoth ones also change. All right, I covered this one a while ago, but there's more info on it. So I had just covered basically... Let's see if I can find it. I had covered this. I would found this photo, and I wasn't sure if it's real, but apparently um, there's a whole syndrome now called mirror hand syndrome, so that somehow the hand um, does two this side like twice. Instead of putting the thumb on there, it does this side twice, and it's called mirror hand syndrome. Again, finding a lot of just weird, um, really weird hand things. This is something I've been seeing a ton of lately, is um, missing an extra finger now, just lately. It used to just be that they had an extra finger, but now they're missing. So it looks like a cartoon. Very weird. So this mirror hand syndrome, there's, there's a lot more images of it now. I'm also just finding there was just one woman who had the giant hands and the normal uh, arms. I'm finding more and more images of that as well, just like the massive hands, ridiculously huge hands. Stuff like that I'm seeing a lot of. So anyway, it's called mirror hand syndrome. Uh, there's also another thing that's also called mirror hand syndrome. And uh, they both have the same nickname. And the other thing is 
when you move one hand, the other one automatically moves. And if you move this one, this one moves. And that's also called mirror hand syndrome because the hands are mirroring each other. All right, see, there's another one. I actually saw one that was like this, and then there was actually another split finger here, too, which is uh, weird. All right, so that's mirror hand syndrome. All right, this one. This one is from Julie Holcomb. Good find. Um, I saw this, oh, a few years ago, actually, but it's gotten more extreme, that clams can swim. They used to just kind of be stuck where they were, but um, now you can see they can swim themselves along. It's like a Pac-Man now. I can't be 100% sure on that, but I'm really suspicious of that one as well. Okay, got you, got you. All right, there's one page. It's disgusting, must be a delicacy. Yeah, it does seem like that, doesn't it, sometimes? Four fingers like a cartoon. I have never seen four fingers ever until like about a month ago. T-Rex isn't the biggest dinosaur anymore. Ooh, I'm not sure on that one. I thought some of those plant eaters were bigger. Now, I did hear they found a bigger T-Rex just recently. So T-Rex has been uh, supersized. There's a bigger one than that one. Heard that Ebola can be dormant in a person for a year now. Yeah, no, no, that... Uh... Ebola, dormant in person. You know, I've covered some other stuff like rabies and stuff can be dormant in a person now, too. I covered that some months ago. That's interesting. Uh, Lyme can be, Lyme disease can be dormant a long time. Cat scratch fever. So basically anybody could get sick at any time because you could have got this years ago and it was laying dormant. Scientists discover Ebola can remain dormant in women, then infect later. Yeah, no. Of course, they just found out, supposedly. So that just makes it pretty hard to eradicate, doesn't it? Because uh, you could think that you've eradicated a infestation, and then years later, somebody suddenly gets it. Can harbor the Ebola virus for more than a year and then infect others. A Liberian family in closing days of the West African epidemic that lasted to 2016. Scientists, so, so these people could just like five years after getting sick or, or being exposed, travel to another country and then suddenly spread Ebola everywhere. Experts believe the immune suppression that normally occurs in pregnancy might have triggered a relapse. No, and then anything that has immune suppression, like old age or other illnesses or any of that stuff, uh, could also trigger a relapse. So a whole kinds of bunch of stuff can lay dormant now. It's very interesting. A lot of these are deadly. Cat scratch fever, Lyme disease, rabies, Ebola. So anybody could become sick at any time and they could say that you came down with it 10 years ago and didn't know and now it's just reemerging. Cuz you know when I was a kid I'd never heard of shingles either. That was something that showed up about 20 years ago. And shingles is what you can get after you have chicken pox. It can show up later as shingles. Uh I never heard of shingles before that. So I I kind of wonder now seeing the pattern the Emmy is taking. Ooh, another dollar. Thank you. Thank you, Andon. Have you heard about the treatment for AIDS being the cause of the symptoms? I guess the cure now is to do nothing. 
I don't know. You know, everything. Oh, George Bernard Shaw, 99 cents. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, and, and yes, I did see the one from, um, oh, what's that guy's name? Um, oh, I forgot his channel, but yeah, he, there's a giant fireball that comes out when the plane hits the twin towers now that wasn't there before. I totally agree with him. Although there are so many changes in nine 11 for me that that's not the half of it, but yes, that new fireball thing is, is very new. It is one of the newer Emmys. The pituitary gland, its place has changed. I think it's up more by the face now, isn't it? It used to be down inside the brain. Actually, I was looking at that um, not long ago. The whole brain has shifted around so much. Images. Yeah, it's up, it's up closer than I remember. Yeah, it's right there. Uh, I remember it kind of sunk way back in here. But this whole structure has changed a lot now. So, to a cherry gland location. Let me see if we can get a verbal. Uh, it's got multiple lobes now, and it has neurons that travel to it. I don't remember all the lobes. Just behind the bridge of the nose. Yeah. Um, between the hypothalamus and the pineal gland, just behind the bridge of the nose. I just don't remember it being that accessible. I remember it being buried inside the brain. Uh, it's still the size of a pea, so it hasn't grown. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that one. Well, I don't know if that's what you remember, but that's what I remember. So James Elliott, yeah, the treatment for AIDS being the cause of the symptoms. Everything is like debunked, different. Um, everything looks fake now. Every corner you look at, there's something that they're, it's just crazy. It's like all the old way is just being debunked. Shardy, the pituitary gland was in the middle of the brain somewhere and not down there. Yes. You know, that's funny you brought it up because I did see that just like this week but i was like oh I'm, I'm not i just wasn't totally sure about it and plus it i just didn't think a lot of people would remember so i mean there's some emmys i'm like oh nobody's gonna really remember that so i'm glad you brought it up does anyone recall the falling man picture and who it is believed to be the falling i'd never heard of that the falling man picture I do not know the falling man picture. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. This is an ME for me there. There was no falling. Okay. All right. Yeah. I saw this maybe a year ago that you could see people falling out of the world, out of the, um, tw out of the twin towers. Um, at, you couldn't in my timeline, you couldn't see that. You did not see people falling. So that's an Emmy for me, uh, and I don't have any idea who it was supposed to be. I mean, I didn't know there was a special word for it. I did notice that they showed falling people lately. Moonlit Illusion I had a pituitary gland scare. So I guess you remember where it was for you then. I saw a commercial where they claimed that if you thought you were at risk for contracting HIV, you could take this medication. Um, I did hear about that. I don't know how effective it was. And there was also supposed to be a vaccine. Not sure how effective that was. How this medication was supposed to be used in combination with condoms in order to be most effective. So I don't know how well it works. Yeah. Yeah, you never really know, do you? 
cerebellum is different here. Yeah, well, the whole inner brain structure is so much more um, specialized now. It used to be just more kind of vague. There weren't nearly the number of structures there are now. His brother is possibly the extra man in the village people band? Huh. Are you serious? Falling man, village people. <laughs> you ever just feel like, um, <laughs> like the Emmy is just trolling us here. All right. Who was the original GI in the disco recording at Village People? In 2005, Briley's brother Jonathan was identified by several people as the Falling Man. <laughs> okay, well, neither one of those existed for me. <laughs> oh my God. All right, so the Falling Man that didn't exist for me is the brother of the GI village person that didn't exist for me. That's all I have to say. I don't know, falling man. There's gotta be something weird in every live stream now. That's a good find, it's a good find. Uh. <laughs> Bill Emmy, that's a good one. I, I don't know where you found that one out, but that's a good one. I, I I do remember th that the current footage shows uh, a number of people jumping and just wasn't. I'll tell you, my old footage uh, from my old timeline was much um, much further back. You could not see nearly as clearly. It's just creepy because the the viewpoint gets closer and closer. It, it, in fact, in my original timeline, you did not see the original plane hitting the first tower. Because nobody had um, any cameras cr uh, angled up there, supposedly. Then after it hit the first tower, people were filming, and that's why they caught the second tower. But it was really, really far back. You couldn't see crap. That's why you couldn't see if anybody was jumping out, because you, you weren't close enough. Some women apparently now have Adam's apples. Yeah, you know, that was, I've, I've covered this one in the past. I think the whole structure here is different. Um, An Adam's apple now is like a swelling of the gland in here. And, and everybody has that. So um, it could, women could have it. Now what I remember is, if you remember the Shaggy and Scooby ME where Shaggy doesn't have an Adam's apple, See, Adam's apple used to be kind of movable as you talked, and it would kind of um, go up and down a little, and it was related to the, the speech mechanisms. And um, now it's not. It's, it's, it's locked in place. It's just cartilage. That's all it is. It doesn't move or anything. And you will, and I've covered this before. If you look, women on the side view, there's more, um, there's more material up in here. And I kind of saw a thickening here, and I, well, I, I thought I was getting old, and maybe it's just getting droopy. But then I started looking at these young kids, and they're 18, and they have it also. And then I started looking at that structure in there, and it was huge. Uh, so, yeah, th there's a lot of changes in the voice box. <laughs> Bill, Emmy, apologies. I thought you were joking. This reality is getting more and more ridiculous as time goes on. Yeah, I know. I know. I read this stuff and I'm like, that sounds like ridiculous. But then I, I Google it and there it is. There it is. I mean, like that weird eclipse pinhole shadows from last week. That was ridiculous. I mean, when somebody put that up on the chat, I was like, what? in the heck are they even talking about and i click i type it in and there it is 
I saw the second plane hit. Yeah, the first plane, there was no video of it for me originally. That 911 guy was in the village, people. Uh, no, it was his brother, supposedly. The, the GI village person. If you know about the, the, the um, YMCAME, is that there's another guy, and it's this GI guy. Um, that people don't remember him being in the village people. And so uh, he's an Emmy. And so apparently now they're saying the falling guy was his brother. Only three buildings fell for me. Yes, QP comes from a, closer to my timeline. Only three buildings fell for me. It was just the Twin Towers and Building 7. And that was it. There was uh, strikingly no damage to any of the other buildings in my timeline. And then, in fact, they yammered on about that, how it was so weird that none of the other buildings were damaged and it was more evidence that it was a controlled demolition because only a controlled demolition wouldn't damage the surrounding buildings. Yam, 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 yam. Uh, that's all out the window now because a whole crap load of buildings are pounded in this timeline. I think it was like 9 or 10 had to get torn down or were already just crushed. Ah, oh, weirdness. The neck apple has a wing bone now. It didn't used to have a bone. The neck apple has a wing bone. I think, are we talking about the, um, that bone, the voice box bone? Ugh, it's not working out. Let's try this. Do neck apple wing bone. I'm going to type it in. Derp. I think we're talking about that, uh, what do you call that thing again? I can't remember the name of anything now. Um, What do you call that thing again? It is the... What is that stupid bone? I haven't actually looked at this in a while. Oh, hyoid bone. Yes, that's the word. Uh, hyoid bone. Okay, so... It doesn't look like it's changed too much since I did a video like a year ago on it. Originally, this was hyroid bone with an R for me. First heard about it ooh, maybe 10 years ago, something like that. Uh, it was said that uh, only humans have it, and that what's, that's what sets us apart uh, from the other animals and why we can speak. Uh, but now a lot of other animals also have it, uh, chimps and stuff. All right, this thyroid cartilage now is said to be uh, what causes the Adam's apple, last I checked, anyways. Um I remember it being more like something to do, uh, there was a movable part in here, and that's why it would move up and down. And that's why you would see on Shaggy that it would go up and down. It was exaggerated, but it would go up and down his throat uh, when he like yelled, and he would crank, crank, uh, put back his neck, and you'd see this thing going. Ah. Uh, so I guess that's why the Emmy had to get rid of it, because in this timeline, it's just thyroid cartilage, and it doesn't move. Uh, so it would actually make sense that um, that uh, women can have it now because women still have this thyroid cartilage. Uh, so they're just saying that it's enlarged in some men and then it usually isn't in women. But I don't know. It's definitely not the weirdest thing the Emmy has ever done. Building 7 fell after someone shouted they are pulling it. Yes, in this timeline, there is video of people saying they were pulling it, and uh, both CNN and uh, BBC were saying that it fell had, like quite a bit of time before it actually fell. Uh, so that's really weird, but that was not in my old timeline. That's just been the last few years that that's, that piece of conspiracy has existed.
When I Google it, it says only three buildings for me. Yeah, technically three buildings fell like pancakes. And then the other buildings were just massively destroyed, but they didn't fall like pancakes. One of them was totally hollowed out in the middle and it just had some side walls. They're not calling it falling, maybe, is the trick. But in my timeline, there was no damage to surrounding buildings. And in this timeline, a whole bunch of them were really, really messed up. Check the pancreas, it changed because my diabetes changed. Um, I do believe it's bigger now, last I checked. Also, um, the shape, it's all like a stretchy outied. It used to be more kind of um, like a pear, like kind of a mashed pear, and uh, now it's like stringy. Um, I talked about that, I think, at least a year ago, probably more. I don't know tons about the pancreas uh, other than that the shape changed, though. Yeah, it looks like... Also, I never used to look like corn on the cob. It, it's weird looking now. I don't remember them depicting it like a corn on the cob. It looks like a man's part now, really. It used to be um, not this long. It had a tail, but it was more like... It was only like two-thirds that length. It didn't have a hook around like this. I actually don't remember it nestled in this well either. But uh, and it didn't used to be depicted like it has corn kernels all over it. That's weird for me too. But that I've seen this for the last few years, so. Only two planes, how would three fall? Makes no sense. Yeah, that was the argument. Why did building seven fall? Um, it had a few fires um, from debris of the surrounding buildings, and then it just collapsed. Just weird in the way it collapsed. Anyways, QP, I'm glad to hear that uh, your diabetes is doing better. I think that a lot of these uh, old problems are going to come up with cures soon, too. All right, I did that one. All right, here's another one. You know, a couple days before the show. Sometimes I have almost no Emmys on my list and I'm like, oh, it's going to be such a short show. <laughs> and then I end up here three hours. Okay. Africa is splitting in two. So apparently a giant crack is opened up on East Africa and uh, they're arguing that it's going to like calve off. Well, here's the crack, and it goes a number of kilometers. Uh, and they're arguing like, like a whole segment of Africa might split off. Of course, they're saying it's for million, it'll be uh, millions of years from now. But I, I do wonder if we're going to see eventually, um, like maybe that fill in with water or something, some kind of Emmy thing. I mean, it's obviously not an Emmy now, but. See if I can find um do, do, do. so they're saying like this area here, it's already got some rivers. Um, they're thinking that it might split off. Let's see if I can find the image of it. What was you know, I swear sometimes you type these in and you find twenty images that are perfect, and then later you can't find anything. So there's the crack. East African Rift, giant crack opens. So basically, though, the theory is that, um, of course, now I can't find it at all. Blah, blah. Here. So they're thinking this may be in process of happening. So something to keep an eye on. Uh, see, like all along here. I, I don't even remember all that water being in there to start with. 
something like this might happen. I, I think it's interesting anyway, just to keep an eye on. So we had a few of those sightings of orange crocodiles. Apparently now there's a whole species of them. Uh, first they were saying that they were uh, dyed by bat guano and bleached. Uh, now they're saying that these, um, these guys here have red eyes and orange skin and maybe they're dyed by bat guano, but they have a more primordial looking head ridges. I'm t frankly, they don't look that different to me, but that's what the article says. And that they have a more um, primordial ancient look to them and they might be a whole new species. Can be found in the Abanda Caves in a remote region in Gabon. Could be mutating into a new species. The eyes were bright red, reflecting my light. I was so frightened. Little is known about the crocodiles. Has a different genetic haplotype to other African dwarf crocodiles living outside. The head shapes are more archaic. Brow ridge is very marked, and the haplotype is a one is a one haplotype found exclusively in the Abanda Caves and nowhere else, including just outside. All right. The weird thing is, I'm looking at them and I don't see any uh, obvious difference here in the outlines of them, but whatever. So this story is expanding. I think we're going to have uh, orange crocodiles here very soon. So that's kind of how it starts. There's a couple sightings of orange crocodiles outside um, here and there, and now there's a whole species of them, but they're only in these caves, so they're not the ones that were spotted outside. Do. All right, uh, there's, I should, probably should have put this with the Mars chit chat, but found this interesting. We're talking about water. Almost all water on Mars today exists as ice, though it also exists in small quantities as vapor. That's very recent. And occasionally as low volume liquid brines in shallow Martian soil. So we've now got uh, liquid brines and shallow Martian soil, supposedly. Let's see, um, five and six are the... Dang, that's a long one. Let's go down faster. Transient liquid water and water activity at Gale Crater on Mars. Okay, so apparently we've got liquid brine on Mars now. Boom. I thought that was interesting. I can't say I'm shocked at all because there's been chit-chat about rain in the upper atmosphere. Oh, this is another thing that also changed. Okay, those polar ice caps. I, I keep looking those up, and the last time I looked them up, it said that they were mostly water. Okay. Um, now they're saying that, let's see, uh, da, 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 let me find that exact words again. Abundant water ice is also present beneath the permanent carbon dioxide ice cap at the Martian South Pole and in the shallow subsurface at modern, more temperate conditions. So, uh, the polar ice caps now are no longer mostly water, but water exists underneath them. That is not the case. Last time I checked, uh, the polar ice caps were like 80% water and 20% carbon dioxide. So I was kind of laughing at the skeptics because they're like, oh, those ice caps are all carbon dioxide. And I go, no, look over here. They're 80% water, neener, neener. Well, now they're almost all carbon dioxide again. So uh, hard to keep up with this business. But uh, the story is shifting now. The water, instead of being in the polar ice cap, 
is uh, under the ground, existing as frost, and right underneath the polar ice caps. I think they said one of the polar ice caps gets coated with uh, water ice also. But now we also have this liquid brine business. So the, course, the story keeps shifting, 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 shifting. Very shifty. I think my chat has uh, crashed. Nobody said anything for five minutes. It seems unlikely. I'm going to reboot that chat. Do, do, do. Oh, coming up. All right, I'm going to press on. All right, the thumbnail. This is actually an older one for me, um, maybe five years old. I heard about this about five years ago. So supposedly in the bad lands of the United States, they were finding these uh, weird corkscrew things in the ground. There was much uh, debate on what they were. The latest story, this has supposedly been around for over 100 years they've known about these things. So the latest story is some people, there seems to be evidence that some kind of rodent in ancient times drilled corkscrew holes. I, I don't know why uh, they would drill something like this. Uh, they found a corpse of one in one of these holes. So supposedly that's supposed to be the proof, evidence, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I, I think there's something that definitely could change easily enough. Um, if they drill these corkscrew holes, then you would think they would have different, more consistent shapes. Seems like a lot of work. They seem, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't want to hypothesize anymore, but it sounds fishy. That's all I got to say. All right, let's see where we are here. KSP Crafters in. Cats with thumbs. Yeah, the polydactylism. I've had that one on. Last I heard, reptiles don't do good in cold climates. Yeah, well, you know, the alligators can be in the freezing waters now. Shari D. Are you talking about your cat? Uh, yeah, I've noticed some changes in, in uh, the stray that we've had for the last year or two. Um, he was just like your mute tabby, like a light tabby. But his underside is getting more white, and he's got uh, this weird silvery shine on his nose now um, that didn't used to have. Also, this is something I've known, I've noticed with a lot of animals that I've never saw before is kind of a, a colored ring around their, their neck. And I saw um, a Malamute with it, like a black line. And, uh, the, and our, our little tabby boy here is also developing one of those. Adult cats who should have a fixed pattern lately will start to get new spots, stripes, develop new color. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. You know, I hadn't even read it yet, but I, always, I already kind of guessed. Cats have been changed. Yes, yes, absolutely. You know, my old dog, um, I noticed changes in her as she got older. Some of her back fur on her legs got longer and more curly, those kind of things. I just assumed it was age, but... Uh, you know, after the Emmy, I wasn't so sure. Can a black cat change color to red if this is happening to my cat? Okay, Shari, there is supposedly um, a mineral deficiency, last I checked, that, that uh, may be at work. I'd never heard of it before until a few months ago. 
So you may want to just check into feeding them more. Cats with tyrosine deficiency have difficulty producing melanin, which causes a black cat to turn a reddish-brown color. This is also known as rusting. A sign of tyrone deficiency in cats is discoloration of the coat, turning the cat coat fur from black to a rusty reddish. Okay. So, um, tyrosine. Try feeding them some tyrosine. Tyrosine. First noticeable around the edges of the fur. By producing, they developed an overall reddish black tint. All right, now they're saying most likely one of the parents was black and the other was ginger. Anyway, uh, you might want to just try feeding more tyrosine. It could be an ME or it could be tyrosine. This whole tyrosine thing, I, I had only just heard of it. 4.5 grams tyrosine for optimal growth. Your cat may need more. I mean, let's face it, cat food is probably not the, you know, the balanced package that uh, wild game is. Experiments showed that these levels were not sufficient to main a, maintain a black coat. An aromatic amino acid concentration greater or equal to 18 grams per kilogram is recommended for the prevention of visually discernible red hair in black-coated cats. Animal products such as meat, fish, and fish contain tyrosine. Diets deficient in tyrosine cause the cat's hair to change from black to reddish brown in cats and due to reduction of melanin. So yeah, I would definitely try uh, some tyrosine supplements uh, just to see if that changed it. Uh, if not, then you're probably fine. Robbie Wright is in. Hello. Zeb Johnson. All right. Where are we at here? Crocs got those. Water on Mars. Devil's Corkscrews. Ah ha ha. This one's funny. This one's funny. This one is from Infinite Solace, one of the commenters on the channel. All right, so we have a creature with interlocking gears on their legs. Isis coleopratris. It's some kind of a bug, a jumping bug, has interlocking gears on its legs in order to make sure that the two legs jump together. They interlock. There they are. Kind of reminds me of that shark with the giant gear mouth that's supposed to be extinct, but these are not extinct. Each leg sports a curved strip of 10 to 12 gear teeth that attach to the trochocantera on the insect's legs. So anyway, we've got um, gear, gear toothed legs on the insects now. All right, here's another one. There's been a lot of changes to Buddhism and stuff for me, um, Hinduism, all of those. 
this one was um, mentioned by Cyber Six Sapien, another another commenter on the channel. I've never heard of this Hindu Hindu um, timelines. It kind of reminds me of you know saying in 2012 that the um, Mayan calendar ended. Well, apparently they've got these um, segments or eras in Hinduism, and I have studied some on Hinduism. I do not recall any of these. Uh, being mentioned, and they probably should because, so they supposedly have these four eras, and uh, the the first one, Satya Yuga, is where like humans are perfect or near perfect creatures, and then uh, Treta Yuga is a big time span where we sort of degenerate some, and then Devapara Yuga, we degenerate more, and then when we're really degenerate is Kali Yuga. And supposedly we're in Kali Yuga right now, and it's supposed to end in uh, 2025. So you'd think that we would have heard about how we suck and that we're going to get out of it in 2025. But um, I never heard of it until just now. And I, like I said, I had done some research on Hinduism, Buddhism, and like that. So, so interesting, another date of shifting, basically, kind of similar to that Maya one, has come out of... For me, it's come out of the woodwork, uh, but you might want to look up this. Um, then we're supposed to go into a 10,000-year golden age. woo -hoo. Okay, so what's uh, symptoms of Kali Yuga? Avarice and wrath will be common. Humans will openly display animosity towards each other. Ignorance of Dharma will occur. People will have thoughts of murder with no justification and will see nothing wrong in that. Lust will be viewed as socially acceptable and sexual intercourse will be seen as the central requirement of life. Sin will increase exponentially while virtue will fade and cease to flourish. People will become addicted to intoxicating drinks and drugs. Gurus will no longer be respected and their students will attempt to injure them. Their teachings will be insulted and followers of Kama will wrest control of the mind from all human beings. Women will no longer get married. Brahmins will not be learned or honored. Kshatriyas will not be brave. Vashyas will not be just in their dealings. Okay, so supposedly at the end of this, it, like, it gets worse and worse, and then we switch over to the golden age. So we can only hope. Yes, let's hope we'll get there. I just think it's really interesting because I've never heard of this. Uh, some sources were saying it was like... Um, Satya Yuga is like the majority of human is good. And then the next one, it's like 25% um, of us is bad. And the next one's like 50%. And then so um, at this Kali Yuga, it was like we were three quarters bad or something uh, was the kind of, there's different, there's a few different um, interpretations of it, but that's kind of the general thing. So it's not that we're 100% bad during um, Kali Yuga, but um, it's the Dark Age, definitely. You know, and it really fits with, you know, some of the Bible teachings and a lot of this other stuff. They're all kind of... I just think it's interesting. The stuff's coming out of the woodwork, never heard of it. It's all saying the same thing. Cats are so disciplined and committed in licking themselves clean. You know, it really depends on what kind of cat you have. If you have a Persian, they're lazy bums. I don't have one, but I know people who have them. They've lost a lot of their wildness, that's why. You get a mixed breed mud cat, then they're usually pretty disciplined about licking, though. Kali Luga Yuga is new for me. Yep, just heard about it from um, Cyber Six Sapien.
I'm getting tired of so much matching up to revelations. I don't know, you know, uh, Kali Yuga, it doesn't really, the one thing it doesn't talk about is like a sorting of the people because revelations, like in the Bible, the people are sorted. The good ones are protected and they just say, don't fear and, and be confident and you'll be all right and it won't touch you. And then the bad ones, it will touch. And a lot of the new agey uh, stuff like Dolores Cannon say something very similar. Like um, I was just watching some Dolores Cannon thing and basically they were saying that, you know, the earth's going to split into two and the better people will go one way and the worse people will go the other. And they were saying that the two earths are sitting on, they sit on top of each other at first. So you see both the bad and the good and then you ally yourself, your energy matches one better and you go with that one. Uh, it's kind of the story. So maybe, I mean, that could be an explanation why we're seeing so much bad stuff as well as so much good stuff. You know, I don't know. I mean, the Kali Yuga is not talking like that, though. They're just basically saying three quarters bad. Now, is it th three quarters of each person or three quarters of the people? <clears throat> maybe they mean three quarters of the people are bad. So if we're going to go into uh, Satya Yuga next, what happens to those three quarters? You know, they got to go somewhere. Uh, also, it doesn't really, I, you know, I'm going to have to look more into this, but I really didn't see any info on how the switchover is made. Uh, what happens at the end of Kali Yuga? What happens end of Kali Yuga? Kali serves as an antagonistic force. The ascend at the towards the end of this yuga, Kalki will return riding on a white horse to battle with Kali and his dark forces. The world will suffer a fiery cataclysm that will destroy all evil, and Shiva will destroy the universe. Hmm. Doesn't sound very fun. No, the world won't actually get destroyed at the end of Kali Yuga. Rather, it's what's going to occur is that when the is that when the evil and decadence of Kali Yuga reaches its zenith, Vishnu will have an incarnation as Kalki the horse rider to kill all the evil people and restore Dharma on earth, commencing a new Satya Yuga. After all the imposter kings have been killed, the residents of cities and towns will feel the breezes carrying the most sacred fragrance of the sandalwood paste. Blah, blah, blah. The world will still go on after the end of Kali Yuga. And he just keeps repeating the cycle. Well, hopefully we'll make it. I plan to try. Weird history popped up about Indians giving smoke enemas for drowning. Oh, Indians now. You know, I heard that that was Americans doing it. Last I checked, and it was like about a year ago, maybe two. In fact, they even had, um, yeah, <laughs> it's tobacco smoke enema. An insufflation of tobacco smoke into the rectum was employed by indigenous peoples. Ooh, it's indigenous peoples now. Now it was Americans last I checked. In the 18th century, the society promoted the rescue of drowning people. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was just natives. It, I did not see the native thing at all last time I, I heard about this. I did look at an, a number of articles Inspired by American First Nations custom. That is a change. It was not Americans. Uh, it was not Native American inspired. It was just some old weird thing. Ameri regular American. Like people from Europe that became Americans. It was not Native American then. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah, anyway, yeah, that's shifted. Mandela affected. Is there another Mandela affected? Yes, there's a whole channel. I realize you're not him. There's a whole channel called Mandela affected. 
and um, maybe it's Mandela Effected. Just check out his channel, and then that's him. I don't think you're, you're, you know, I see you're not him because I clicked on you. The elite wants Kali Yuga back. Well, I don't think the elite gets it. But according to that, it gets worse and worse, and then we get um, Satya Yuga. The Bible says the same thing, though. They, it says that it, you know, there's going to be a switch over to the 10,000 years of peace. So I don't think that the evil people have a choice. The sound of the sky trumpets is creepy. Yep. It sure is. Time matters. Still going, you mean that we still exist? Yeah, you know, it seems like all the different ones are all basically saying that the good people will still be alive. Yeah, the original. Yeah, Mandela affected a lot of us nickname him M.A. or Ma because he never said his real name. So if I say, oh, somebody said on his channel, it's not you, it's that other dude. Oh, yeah, that's right. QP Ma has a space in his name, Mandela space affected all right do, do, do. there's Kali Yuga well I think I've got it all now gears corkscrew Mars ah I think I came to the end it's a miracle yep I'm done I'm done all right it's like late it's almost three so I'm gonna um truck on out of here so let's all hope we, uh, let's all look for the positive, hopefully. Try to be good people. Um, I don't think that we can go to the good place unless we're good. So we try, I mean, try to be as good as you can and think good thoughts and, and be kind to people and stuff because I think that's the only way that we can get to the good place. I don't think they're going to let you in if you're full of hatred and anger and judgment and all that stuff, so... I mean, I know it's not easy, especially when everybody around you is doing it, but do your best, do your best. All right, I'm going to um, shut this down, see if I have any luck this time getting it closed. So anyway, thank you, everybody. Uh, you also had a lot of good Emmys for today, so I appreciate that, uh, all your con contributions. Uh, it's like half the channel is from you guys, so that really helps. So anyways, uh, this is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Timeline.